Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Mark Deppi from the UCI eSports program with another video on the ins and outs of college eSports recruiting. Uh, we always get a ton of questions about how do we find great players. Lots of universities are looking to build eSports programs and want to know how do we do it uh, or how, do, how should they do it. Um, so today we have an, an awesome uh, group of uh, folks joining us, our two League of Legends coaches. Uh, I'll introduce them in a second. Um, in our first video, we, we spoke with our Overwatch coaches about broadly what we're looking for for players and generally uh, an overview of our recruiting program. Today, we're going to go uh, dive a little bit dip, deeper into specifically League of Legends uh, and, and what we do as a program. So with that said, I'd first like to have our, our awesome coaches, um, David Hermes 2 and Jeff Central Time Wang, introduce themselves so you get to know them a little bit. Hi, guys. My name is David. I go by Hermes within the league scene. I coach the varsity side of the UCI league program. And today we'll just be discussing topics in terms of how you can get into the league program. Hi, my name is uh, Jeff. I go by Central Time Online. I'm the assistant coach for the program. I work a lot with the JV program uh, and kind of, yeah, building out the developmental side of uh, the league program. Cool. Uh, well, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, we're really proud of our coaching staff, uh, UCI and, and David and Jeff for awesome resources. Um, so first of all, I'm going to talk about broadly our program, what we offer, things you should think about um, as, as you're looking to either get recruited or build a recruiting program. Um, first of all, I just want to briefly mention we have our, our five pillars of our program, things that we are uh, always focused on. We focus on competition, supporting research, engaging the community, create entertainment, launching careers. Um, so obviously competition is a, a central part of what we're doing and finding great people to be in the program is, is one of the most important things that I do as a director. Um, so first of all, uh, when we're looking for players, you have to be a UCI student. So that comes with applications and being an eligible student, having great grades um, and providing a compelling application and, uh, and getting admitted to UCI. Um, we do recruit a few students that are uh, pretty spectacular at League of Legends and also great students, but most of our students actually come from the UCI community, people who are already admitted to the university uh, and want to try out for the team. Um, uh, so uh, other, other things I want to mention is kind of what our program offers to players and recruits. Um, we think we have a pretty robust package for what we provide. First of all, we provide a lot of people support. So you'll, you'll meet our coaches a little bit more in, in a bit, but we have awesome coaches. Uh, we have our player support coordinator, Hillary. Uh, she meets with players regularly, make sure they are managing their time well, they under, understand the academic load. She arranges tutoring for folks if they need it. Uh, she helps them schedule meetings with our team psychologist. Uh, our teams meet regularly with our team psychologists to address uh, team conflict issues or any mental blocks that they might be experiencing in game. Um, we have a great exercise physiologist who's doing workouts, talking about sleep and nutrition and ergonomics, uh, general health and wellness stuff. Um, if you need tutoring, uh, I think I mentioned that uh, we, we help we help students with tutoring. Um, we also do career prep, so you're gonna you're gonna graduate from UCI and you're gonna go on and do something after your playing career. So we help prep people for uh, for applying to jobs, applying to graduate school, applying to internships, all those things. Um, and then you get some of the great swag, whether it's uh, peripherals or apparel. Uh, there's a lot of great gear that you get from being with our program. So those are a few of the things that uh, I see as perks for players and people affiliated with our program. Um, and then I think you're going to gain a lot, of t uh, a lot of skills, whether it's uh, leadership skills, communication skills, uh, learning how to work with people from diverse backgrounds, people that are different than you, people you might disagree with. Um, all those skills, I think, are going to be really helpful later in life. So that's kind of a little bit about our program and what we're offering. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to our coaches now to talk a little bit more specifically about what we're looking for with League of Legends. So first, uh, I'm going to outline how the collegiate season works in general for any prospective recruits looking to join the program. So Riot uh, has a governing body, the Riot Scholastic Association. They host a collegiate tournament that occurs throughout an academic year. Generally, the regular, regular season will start in January. Late January lasts for relatively two months, then leading into regional playoffs. So if you were to join UCI, you'd be part of the West Coast Regionals. And we would play throughout playoffs in order to qualify for a, the upper echelon, the Nationals, for the collegiate 
uh, competition. So in accordance to that at UCI, we go by a quarterly system. We have fall, winter, and spring quarters, and we'll host tryouts during those quarters. So the first tryout, if you were to apply for the program, will occur early October, usually, between the first and second weeks of the fall quarter. And once we finalize our candidates and we field a roster, we'll be training that roster throughout the fall quarter. We'll then host a second tryout leading into the collegiate competition in early winter. So we'll get to see how that training has paid off for our varsity team, for our junior varsity team, and then compare it to maybe incoming uh, competitors that have not had the chance to try out for the program previously. Yeah, that's, uh, I think the, the two trial format is something that is definitely really interesting that UCI does for just the format in general for how we recruit. Um, I think specifically running the JV team this past uh, past two quarters, we've had um, players that made the JV squad were not able to try out in the in fall. So um, specifically, our bot lane uh, from this past winter quarter uh, was completely new and completely made it out of the original uh, out of the winter quarter, as opposed to missing the fall. So that's been uh, that's been a really big like advantage, I think. <coughs> David, I mean, it's 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 kind of just like a major advantage to be able to be super flexible with the rosters and have players that, um, you know, compete to fill slots that otherwise wouldn't other wouldn't otherwise have been filled, right? Definitely, I think the the main thing is that having the two trial format allows us to field the most competitive roster going into the competition. And just as well, we understand that due to maybe some life uh, obstacles, academic obligations, maybe you're coming into the campus for the first time, especially as incoming freshmen, you might miss the fall trial, and that's okay. The main thing is that there are going to be two opportunities for you to join the program, but you will be competing against our existing varsity and JV players who have had training. So they're going to have to be able to prove as an incoming prospect that you definitely want to join the program, you have the motivation there. You can handle the academic rigors of UCI, and you have the talent and skill set ready to compete. So for the next section, I'm going to discuss uh, the trial application itself. Um, the trial application generally will need to have your uh, OPGG or just any link to your existing account on the North American servers. Um, if you are an incoming player with a different account or an account on a different server, Please provide that as well. We can make use of it. But we're looking for your solo queue ranking. We're looking, we'll be asking questions on your application to see if you're a strong cultural fit for us, meaning that you have that competitive spirit and that you're willing to work in the team environment. And then as an addition to that, we're looking for a uh, point of view recordings. So we want to see exactly what you're looking at when you play the game. Um, this is, of course, not necessary, but we highly recommend that you come in prepared with these recordings because from coaching from coaching staff, we're really looking to see what you prioritize, how you see the game, what incentivizes or motivates you when you're in on the rift. Uh, we do want to emphasize that it is four invited applicants per role. So within League of Legends, of course, there are five positions: top, jungle, mid, bot, and support. And that of those, we're only inviting four to actually play within our tryout. Um, and then to even make matters more exclusive and competitive, two of those slots typically will be going towards our varsity and JV players. So that leaves two spots remaining. We want to stress that our program is highly competitive and that we're looking to field, again, the strongest roster that the UCI student body can offer going into the collegiate season. Um, Damien, can you actually go into the next slide? And... Jeff, what are some things that the players want to have going into tryouts? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that's a question that we get asked a lot when it comes to the actual side of things is, you know, as a player, how can I best prepare myself going into tryouts? So um, obviously you can prepare and try to get to the highest rank you can because that's going to be a major differentiating factor. But generally what we recommend is to, to have a plan going into the tryouts. Um, at the end of the day, you're going to be competing alongside a lot, of, a lot of other really, really competitive candidates. So it's all about finding a way to differentiate yourself. Um, personally, what I recommend is just, just going in with uh, a set you know, group of champions that you're really confident on so that you're able to best showcase your own abilities. 
Um, definitely in terms of mindset, you want to make sure that it's all about, you know, how can I best showcase myself? Even if I'm losing some of the games during tryouts or not necessarily um, paired with teammates that I synergize or work really well with, you can still be really successful because you're going in with a plan of understanding how you're going to be differentiating yourself as an individual. Um, I think another thing that players can do to prepare themselves is really get some experience going in in terms of how to play in a team environment. Because definitely on, on the ladder by yourself, it's really difficult to, to you know, instill fundamentals in yourself uh, that are required in pro play and competitive play. So, um, for example, a few of our JV players have actually played in HSEL or kind of like NASEP and Mural tournaments, which are a great way. Um, and, they're, they're, you know, there are tournaments like that and tournament organizers like that all around the country uh, that you can find experience and compete in. So you just get a little bit of that competitive edge going in. So that's also a really helpful way to prepare yourself when it comes to pitting yourself alongside some other really strong candidates. Yeah. And, and what, one thing I want to add in uh, that or kind of expand upon that you mentioned, Jeff, is if you have your plan for tryouts, make sure you get to showcase the stuff that makes you a special player. Uh, I, I've had players tell us after tryouts, look, I didn't get to play the hero or the champion that I'm really a specialist in, or I didn't get an opportunity to show what I'm good at. Um, and so uh, make sure you, whatever it takes, whether you tell the coaches or your teammates or whatever, uh, but make sure you you get that opportunity to show off what you think makes you a special player because we want to see it. We want to know what your best looks like uh, and, and see what, what your strengths are so that we can work with those and maybe find a way for, for those to fit into the team. All right. So next I'm going to talk about if you submit your trial application and it gets accepted and you are invited into our tryouts, which again, we invite primarily focusing on SiliQ ranking as well as your answers to our interview questions. And then on top of that, if you have any recordings to submit, we will view those. And that can be the differentiating factor of how you get in versus someone who may answer the question similarly to you or have a very high similar SOLIQ ranking. So if you get into the trial, this is typically what the trial format will be like. Uh, Damien, can you go on to the next slide? So the trial format, typically within those 20 players that are invited to, the tryout, we will separate them into four teams. And of those four teams, you'll be playing in three blocks with three matches per block throughout one day of tryouts. So this is typically nine games to showcase your strengths, showcase what you're made of, and showcase how well you work within the team environment. In between each block, we'll be asking the players, getting some feedback. How did they feel about that block? Did they feel like they were able to showcase their strengths? How did they feel about their teammates? So that way we're collecting both feedback of yourself and how the trial's being run for you, as well as receiving peer-to-peer -peer feedback. We want to know how the players feel about their teammates going throughout the tryouts. After every block, we'll often swap out the rosters because again, we want to diversify the team environments you'll be exposed to. We want to see how you operate alongside your peers. So you'll be able to be mixed with different junglers, different top laners, basically different everything except within your own position. We'll make sure that you keep your position so you can again showcase the strengths and the champion pool throughout the day. So you'll get, play nine games total. You will be playing with different rosters throughout the day. And you'll have an avenue to both give coaching staff feedback as to how you're doing, as to how we can best accompany you and help you bring out the best out of yourself throughout the day. And then we're also collecting peer-to-peer -peer feedback to know how you feel about other trial applicants of different positions for that day. Um, one last thing we want to mention is, again, we'll have varsity and JV players within the trial as well. They're here to defend their positions. They're here to reclaim and prove that they belong to the program. We want to stress again how competitive it is. So with that said, from coaching staff, we make sure that we separate all players get everyone equal footing going into the tryout. So no varsity player will be playing with each other during the first uh, scrim round, the scrim, uh, first scrim block. And likewise, no JV player will be playing with each other. This is to ensure that there are no existing synergies within the rosters that are formed. So as an incoming competitor, as a new tryout, someone new to the UCI campus or new to the program, they'll be able to, again, have that fair footing. Also, from coaching staff to spice things up. We'll give you guys additional resources to through uh, research on your, on your opponents. So you'll get to see who you're up against in those rosters ahead of time. You'll get to see 
who you're opposing. So let's say you're trying out for top laner. You're going to see all the opposing candidates also trying out for top lane and what they're good at. You'll get to see their champion pools. You'll get, you'll get to see in-game match statistics. You'll get to see what they're playing throughout the day. So that way we can measure how well you adapt. So not only measure how well you display your strengths, but also how well you adapt throughout the day based on what you see from opposing candidates and how they're trying out for the same position that you're trying out for. Yeah, I think some of the really cool things that we've started implementing in especially the last winter quarter tryouts, uh, probably some, some of the nuances that a lot of the players might miss is that from the coaching side standpoint, we're putting a lot of thought into you know, how can we analyze what's happening in the games to find you know, interesting pairings between certain players. Um, you, know, you might be asking yourself, okay, we have 20 players in the tryouts, how can, you know, two coaches watch, you know, the POVs from all the 20 players. But um, what we really try to do is try to pick um, and alternate between captains that are going to be sharing their POVs throughout the day. So over the course of the nine games, we get a really, really solid picture across all the candidates about, you know, what exactly their camera control looks like, you know, down to the really, really, like, nuanced, nitty-gritty things. Um, and that really helps us, you know, find interesting ways to pair players together, find teams that might have uh, interesting synergies that we want to look for. And that adds a lot of depth to, you know, as from the evaluation standpoint, how we're able to find the right results and the, and the right candidates for our teams ultimately. So we kind of discussed and broken down the format. Uh, in this next slide, we're largely, if you're a prospective recruit, come again. This is what we from Coaching Staff are looking for. This is the best thing you can do to differentiate yourself and pull ahead of the competition when you're, when you're in this tryout. So uh, next slide, Damien, please. So again, emphasizing you've had a strong application, you've got into the tryouts. The breakdown is that you've got nine games to show off what you're made of. Here are the three things that we are looking for in terms of recruiting new talent or recruiting existing talent back into the program. We're looking at mechanics, we're looking at map movement, and we'll get communication. So hopefully these, this, this terminology is familiar to you as a league player, but I'm going to briefly break down each of these things. So for mechanics, we're looking for how well you as a player can play out a position. So in other words, do you know how to trade with your champion? Do you know the ins and outs of your champions? Do you know your damage output? Do you know your limits? Can you play a really good favorable position well? So for example, if this champion matchup is supposed to go in your favor, how well do you get a lead and how well do you extend it? Likewise, if you don't get a great champion matchup, can you at least demonstrate playing with your champion that hopefully you're comfortable on? Again, to emphasize what Mark was saying, play to your strengths. Do you know how to play an unfavorable matchup? So these are really big things in terms of mechanics that we're looking for. We just wanted to see, hopefully it's displayed in your solo queue ranking as well, but display, try to demonstrate strong champion mastery play to your strengths, and be able to show us that you can play a lot of different scenarios with your champion pool really well. Jeff, you have anything, anything to add for mechanics? Uh, I think, you know, for me, when I'm looking at just, like, analyzing champion mastery, a lot of it comes down to, you know, are you able to showcase um, either expected uses of a particular ability or, like, a key ultimate? Or are you able to find creative uses that maybe didn't even occur to some of your teammates or even the coaching staff in some cases, right? So I think, um, you know, at least for me personally, it's, I, I like to really highlight and showcase and encourage, like, creativity within players. So if they're able to find, like, an interesting build or an interesting um, use or an interesting play that they can call for and get buy-in from their teammates in during the tryouts, that's a, that's a major differentiating factor for me. Yeah, we love players that look to optimize. So if you are bringing in full mastery of a champion going into the tryouts, we want to see how you optimize on that champion. Whether it's through builds, runes, masteries, whether it's through how you want to play the map, whether it's through contributing to how you want your team to draft around your champion to really fully bring out what you can do, that speaks a lot to us. And, and what, one thing uh, I just want to point out I hear you not say is, is that uh, you're not looking for each player to win every game, right? Like it's more about looking at your role within the the game that or match that you're playing. Um, but certainly we can evaluate a lot about a player without them winning a game, right? So just talk just talk about that. And I think broadly, more broadly, even just think about solo queue or how you get better as a player. Um, winning is nice. It makes your SR or your uh, your 
uh, ranking go up. Uh, but um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting better as a player. And what we're looking for in tryouts are really are really great players. Um, and so winning and losing isn't quite as important, right? Right. Especially in terms of how the, the trial is designed. We know that you're not going to be winning all your games. It's expected that you're not going to. I definitely want to emphasize that oftentimes there will be imbalances between rosters. It's impossible to perfectly balance every single roster. So we can't imagine that you're going to win every single game. We hope you don't lose every single game, but we've had child applicants that have come out of the program, joined the program, despite losing the majority of their games. The whole point is that through every single match, you're here to demonstrate like your individual skill. So your champion mastery, the way you operate on the map, and we're gonna bring it to map movement next in terms of like thinking about how you can shine and differentiate yourself from other candidates playing for your position. I wanna emphasize again, you're not competing against teams. You are trying out for a single position and you will likely have three others to compete against in terms of making the tryout. So, Going into the next topic, which is if we're looking at your mechanical skill, your technical skill, then the second thing is your math movement. So for hopefully, again, if you're viewing this video and you really want to know how to get into the UCI League program, math movement is a concept that's familiar to you. Uh, from coaching staff, we specifically are measuring how decisive you are in your math movement. We want to see, again, we'll... As Jeff mentioned earlier, we'll have point of view recordings throughout the tryout. So we'll look into the way you see the game. If we want to know how decisive you are and what motivates your movement. So we're measuring decisiveness and intent. Where do you choose to go in game and why did you choose to go there? How, what specifically motivates you as a player in game and what are you measuring? These are things that from a gameplay perspective, having existing competitive background or just macro knowledge, if you do a lot of research, if you watch a lot of professional uh, pro League of Legends, can help you out a lot. But we'll also train these things. So again, we're inviting uh, trial applicants of different backgrounds to apply, but being very decisive and knowing very clearly what you value, and you can communicate that and express that clearly to your teammates, that's what we measure the most. Yeah, so, absolutely. I, I think it's really worth uh, emphasizing the fact that it's not that, you know, tryout candidates are already expected to possess all of these skills perfectly. Um, it's more that we want to look for the right, you know, where you're starting from. Like, what are your instincts uh, when it comes to being decisive? What are your instincts when it comes to when you're put in this position, when you're ahead? Are you already doing the right thing? Are you already, you know, taking the right approach to extending your lead? If you're behind, are you taking the right approach to either stabilizing the game or finding a way back in? Um, I think that's definitely something that in general when it comes to benchmarking is really important because then it, it helps us find like you know what when it comes to working with you in the future thinking about that idea like if you were to make the program um once you make it where are we starting from and what skills do we think think are are most important for you to learn and you know we might have a recipe for a player who um is really starting at a really really high point but then later doesn't really have the drive or the work ethic um you know we're looking for the instincts to make sure that you already know kind of like a lot of these baseline things in terms of mechanics, map movement, and then the third topic we're going to cover, which is communication. Uh, and it's down to your ability to showcase that again against the other candidates. One last thing I want to mention in terms of map movement is flexibility is king. So I'll bring up a previous trial applicant, you know, they had an abundance of macro game knowledge. They knew what the proper play was in their mind, but their teammates just weren't on the same page. So in this case, the best thing you can do to really showcase your skills is how fast can you adapt? You have access information. You look at your mini map, you're seeing what your teammates are doing. You're going to listen and hear them in comms. So at that point you think about, okay, what is the best thing I can do in this scenario? Right? It's a skill set that you, you typically can, uh, develop and demonstrate in solo queue, we want to see you showcase it in the tryout. So again, flexibility in your map movements is really key. And that relies on you being able to process that information, seeing where your teammates are, and then adapt to the situation. So the last thing is communication. And this one is actually a little broad. So I'm going to break it down to two categories. It's going to be your in-game and then your out-of-game communication. 
So for in-game communication, I am specifically, and it's a very easy acronym to remember it by, I'm looking for very specific, very concise, and very intelligent communication. So SCI, S-C-I. By specific communication, I just mean it can be the difference between saying uh, my mid laner is missing, if you're playing mid lane position, for example, versus being more specific. My mid laner is getting his blue buff. My mid laner is recalling. My mid laner could be moving bottom, right? Being very specific if your communication in game is more helpful for your teammates. So we'll be listening for that. We're listening for concise information. So remember, you're sharing the space with four other people on your team. So the shorter your, your, your sentences, the shorter your communication, the better. And then finally, intelligent communication. So this really caters to like, are you meeting the needs of your teammates? Is the information you're communicating relevant to them? Can they use this information well? And then that's actually gonna segue into what your out of game communication works as well. So if you're having intelligent communication in game, sometimes you need to be able to have conversations with your teammates out of game and ask them, was that good for you? Is this what you needed in the moment? What can I say better to meet exactly what you need to do in order to perform? So communication out of game involves being able to collaborate and work alongside your teammates. It means being able to handle conflict well whether it's internal conflict within the team, because we're naturally going to be inviting very competitive players, which means with that competitive spirit will arise conflict. So how, how well you want to break down that conflict with your teammates, how well you want to overcome obstacles, right? The whole point of the, again, of the tryout format is that you'll be in different team environments and you'll be thrown a wide variety of obstacles because you're most likely going to be thrown a wide variety of different situations, different team compositions, different players that you have to face up against. So how well do you, you tackle those obstacles as an individual? And how well do you communicate how you want to tackle those obstacles with your teammates? So that's what I mean by both your out-of-game communication and your in-game communication. I think, I think something that's super interesting that we always see like play out within the tryouts is you'll have an individual who might be super vocal in one roster, and then the moment they're pitted up with teammates that are similarly vocal, you know, the amount of space they have in comms gets greatly reduced, and that might change the way that you know, they're also communicating. Um, sometimes that affects their play even. So it's, it's really down to those, even, you know, we pay attention to even those nuances within tryouts is, can you find your space in comms? Can you be concise, not storytell, and really like elaborate super heavily? Because oftentimes, in a really competitive setting, in a really high, you know, an intense match, you're not going to have as much time or as much space or as, as many words to be able to communicate what you need to. So I think um, another really major topic that kind of goes towards all three of these uh, mechanics, map movement, and communication is consistency. So when it comes to tryouts, consistency is absolutely essential because it's down to, you know, can you put and showcase yourself individually? Can you put together a really solid performance um, game by game? Even if you're not, like to Mark's point earlier, even if you're not winning all of your games, can you still consistently sh demonstrate, you know, I do have these really solid skills in terms of map movement. I have these really solid skills in terms of champion mastery for the champions that I've selected for my part. Um, can I communicate when I need to? Um, finding the space, again, within different rosters who might have different strong voices. Um, I think finding the consistency with, across the nine games of trials that you have to play is, is a really key factor in terms of showing the coaching staff that you'll be able to replicate that if we were to select you on the roster. For sure. I definitely want to piggyback on what Jeff said. It's nine games in this one day of tryouts. So be prepared. It's going to be very long. We will provide breaks in between each game and then longer breaks between each block. But just understand that playing all day from home, playing solo queue is very different from playing in a very competitive environment. So be prepared to, to endure, have some pre, uh, performance routines, be prepared to reset in between every game. And again, we're looking for that consistency throughout the day. So finally, if, again, this is during the trials, so these are the three aspects that you're looking for. If we are very uh, excited to bring you onto the program, we'll usually go through one last interview, again, seeking for that cultural fit. We'll do an interview before, during your, uh, when you submit your trial application, we'll interview you then, we'll interview you during, and then we'll interview you after. Again, we wanna make sure that you're a good fit for the program, both academically and culturally. Like you have that competitive spirit that you're willing to work in a team environment. Once you pass all those, then we'll either sign you up and bring you on to either our varsity team and our junior varsity team. 
So Damien, if you can go into the next two slides. And the big thing is that for our varsity team, actually you can go one more slide, Damien. Our varsity team, we are looking to field the strongest roster. Uh, it's why we have a two tryout format throughout the academic year. We're testing time and again, what is the most competitive roster we can field for the collegiate season? I want to emphasize that that's, this is how we primarily uh, offer mobility between JV and varsity. So if you make the JV team in the fall, you still have an opportunity to play for the varsity position in the spring. The main point is that you should understand from our perspective of, as coaching staff, we want to do our best to represent UCI as a whole. So varsity is largely there. You're going to see, we're going to know from the tryouts who is the strongest person for each position. And then finally for junior varsity, we're there to recruit largely future prospects, whether with, within the same academic year or even future years. We are very heavily invested in the long-term growth of our program. We want to make sure that we are putting resources into players that will have that motivation throughout their, their uh, enrollment within UCI. We want to make sure that they have the right mindset, a very growth mindset, a, a very, um, they can demonstrate that they're great at learning, great at adapting, great at utilizing the resources that UCI is willing to provide. Yeah, so when it comes to the actual time commitments for both the rosters, David, I think the, the approaches and maybe how it plays out in the actual is pretty different for both the rosters. So maybe we should touch a little bit on that. Yeah. For varsity, we'll, in the fall, so again, two trial format. And once you get into the program for varsity or junior varsity, we'll be training you guys in the fall. And what that typically looks like will be between two to three scrim blocks for varsity, maybe less for JV, but then that's alongside a bunch of other uh, training or a, a more diversified training regimen. So that will include one-on-ones with coaching staff to receive uh, direct feedback. It will include VOD review sessions where we'll be studying professional games. It will include in-house drills where we'll be playing, pitting the varsity team against the junior varsity team with drafts pre-prepared. We'll be playing to train up our leading phase, train up our early to make game transitions, basically making the most out of what our program has with the talent that we possess. So there'll be a bunch of different ways for us to be training. We recognize that we have to balance the amount of hours you can commit to the program, to the league program alongside your academic obligations. So we have a wide and varied ways of making sure that we can hit all the skill sets. We'll create a development plan for you and make sure that you feel growth. And we'll check in every now and then to see like how you feel if your involvement with the program, what we can better do to assist you. But we're looking to make sure that moving from fall to winter to spring, there's clear sign of growth in terms of you as a player and that again, going into that winter tryout and then playing for us either on varsity or university in the spring, that you are the best that you can be. Yeah, so, uh, go ahead. sorry, Mark. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, uh, so, so our coaches are obviously very good at identifying league talent. They kind of walked you through uh, how we try to find the best roster and rosters for our teams. Uh, I just wanna throw in that uh, we also do some interviews to kind of check for fit and to make sure people understand our expectations uh, around academics, around culture. Um, I will say largely over our four years of existence, team conflict has probably been our biggest hurdle. Um, and when we get it right, when our team gels and they, uh, and they work together well, uh, we're able to play above our talent level. And oftentimes when there's a lot of team conflict, uh, the, the players, while individually gifted, um, often don't synergize and, and kind of uh, play to the level that they're capable of. So, I just want to share that there is an additional interview process that we do with our top our top uh, applicants and people from tryouts. Um, and then, uh, as Jeff and David were mentioning, uh, we do check in with players very very regularly. I have quarterly conversations with all of our players to hear directly from them uh, about their thoughts on the program, how school is going, how life, how the team is. So uh, we're very interested in supporting people and uh, making sure that they feel welcome uh, and then helping them fit and making sure they understand our culture. So just want to throw that in. Yeah, absolutely. I think one factor that I've always heard since I joined UCI is just that, you know, it's not just about developing him as a player, it's definitely about developing him as an individual, like as a person as well. Um, a cool thing that I can speak on recently is that, you know, we had a player on JV, grade-wise going to the quarter, we were a little bit concerned about. Um, 
you know, we had a really productive meeting with Mark and some of the other arena staff, and the management staff, and that conversation led to having, you know, one of the best quarters of his entire undergraduate career. So, you know, those kind of moments of growth are definitely something that um, I take really, a lot of pride in for the program, and it's 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 a really interesting thing to be a part of because um, a lot of players coming come in with expectations about, you know, I'm only going to get resources related to my to my gameplay. You're only going to get coaching. Um, but that's, you know, couldn't be further from the truth because there's just so many resources, uh, a lot of which Mark mentioned at the beginning of the video, that are all kind of working together to help build as strong of a program as possible. Yeah, and, and we are certainly interested in students graduating. As of now, all of our students, 100% of our, our players have graduated over the years. So um, uh, it is certainly something we're focused on, and we want to help people be successful in life, not just on the rift. So um, just know, yeah, if you're part of our program, uh, we will invest a lot of resources into you. Whether you are part of the JV or varsity, you are definitely a part of the family. We are here to take care of you. We are here to provide you the resources you need to succeed, both in and out of the game. So uh, I think that, yeah. you have anything, Jeff? Um, I could just briefly touch on JV, just because I think we might have gone over it a little quickly. But uh, I'll just touch quickly on maybe a little bit of, of a difference in terms of approach for JV. Um, one major characteristic that I want to just call attention to is that, in general, the game knowledge and kind of experience going into JV versus varsity might be a little bit or imbalanced. Like there will be some members on JV that will be super experienced and have a lot of competitive experience coming in, and then there will be some members that have never played competitive, before. and that's okay. Um, I think for the for the JV roster, it's definitely down to you know we want to bring people with a lot of promise and a lot of potential and who have drive and work ethic uh, to get better and improve and adapt. Um, so I think um, that's just a small difference. It's, it's a lot more inclusive. And you have a much bigger chance of just coming in to grow and learn, and it's it's really down to you get. How much Cool. Well, uh, thank you both so much for your time. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think that's a great overview of how we look at recruiting and finding players, uh, running through tryouts, what, what's important, all that stuff. So hopefully this was helpful to our watchers. Um, and thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, David and Jeff, for sharing your expertise and time. And uh, stay tuned for future videos around the ins and out of college recruiting. Thank you, everyone.